Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thought I'd give you a different backdrop than my normal audio listening room. This is my dining room and uh, wanted to feature a piece of art from an artist that I've had do some custom commission work in terms of if you've seen in my other room, maybe I'll put up some pictures. He's done some commission work where uh, he's made speakers. I, I told him an audiophile. He's done one for my daughter. He's done one where the speaker has like uh, artists playing inside the, the box and the horn is actually of the instrument is actually looking like the drivers. So uh, he's a cool guy. I'll put up some information if you're ever interested. The starving artists need our support. And actually, I went to an art um, exhibit this weekend. One of the things that helped my camera <laughs> go down in battery life this weekend, filming all this content for you guys, was started off on Friday with a Ukrainian benefit uh, for obviously the war effort. One of my friends who you've seen in video, Ella, she's Ukrainian and um, was and has family that actually lived in Ukraine and they've been displaced. So she was doing a fundraiser and had lots of artists offering artwork um, for charity purposes. And actually my friend Steve, maybe I'll put up a picture, um, who also owns all the great audio gear that I mentioned in the past and has the Griffin Apex on the way, MBL Extremes on the way, uh, Forza's from Estelon on the way, just tremendous systems everywhere, um, as well as Ferraris, living the good life, great guy too, uh, very generous, attended the um, benefit, and he bought this really cool music-themed sculpture, um, so I'll put it up and let you take a look at that as well. And Joel Ray, who is also a friend of mine, he does artwork at 3MA that you've seen in the background. Really cool art. Um, so again, support these artists when you can. And obviously good benefits, uh, charity benefits. Try to support those if you can. So that was just part one of what I filmed this weekend. Actually, my battery, though, went dead from Saturday, filming a lot of content for you guys. Um, one of it was the... Audio Society, Houston Audio Society had a meeting at 3MA. So I have some content to share with you on that where 3MA does some announcements that heretofore haven't been public. Some cool things coming up. Uh, so I'll save it for that video instead of spoiling it for you. And then also a gentleman with AudioQuest was there doing an AB demo with power cords and also power conditioners. Now, I steer clear of a few things on the public channel, and that's why I have a membership section uh, that if you want to join as a member, it takes the place of the subscribe button. After you subscribe to the channel, there's then a button that should show up, although I've heard on different devices it's kind of, or whatever, ad blocking for whatever reason. YouTube hasn't figured that out yet, and it blocks the join button, but on certain devices you should be able to see it. And you get access to a whole nother set of content and videos that I release, as well as our text group that um, is a fun group. Uh, in fact, uh, we have people from all over the globe in this text group, and, and now it's probably like 50% audio, 50% other topics we just uh, talk about and have fun with. So feel free, if you do join the, to join that text group, make sure you join that as well, and it's all in the membership area. But in any case... Getting back to cable debate, I usually put that stuff, um, I could do it on the public channel, get lots of subscribers, you know, get lots, of, but also trolls and stuff that I'm just not interested in dealing with. Um, you know, it's a slippery slope anyway when you start arguing and are you really going to convince people one way or the other? Uh, I'm not, just to, in short though, to tell you where I stand outside of where I go into much more detail in the membership section is that I don't judge people if they have the molded power cords and no power conditioner, and it, whether you have 30,000 power cords, uh, $30,000 power cords and, you know, ridiculous priced power conditioner. You know, people can spend their money however they want, and if you buy it just because of the cool looks of the cord or cool looks, the LEDs on the power conditioner, that's fine. Now, I have my own extensive experience with cables. I have touched on it a bit in public channel videos such as uh, tweaks and accessories videos. That's my dog in the background. The risk of uh, filming inside is hearing the dog sometimes. So anyway, um, if you want to join, that's good. I'll put, I'm going to put that part of what I filmed only in the membership section. I know that that's just my choice. 
I don't, I don't want to deal with all the hassle of that. Um, uh, also, though, I uh, went to a gentleman's house who I featured in the past. He has the YG 2.3s, and it's a great room, one of the best rooms I've been to, period, and especially the way he's transformed what otherwise would be a terrible room with these acoustic curtains, night and day difference. Uh, and also what was great is somebody for the first time got to hear his system and was considering two, YG 2.3s. And it was very interesting hearing her have the same reaction a lot of people have when they hear this system. It's like, man, it doesn't even seem like I'm listening to a stereo. And that's one of the best compliments you can give to somebody when you listen to their system. If it just you just immerse yourself in the music and you forget you're listening to a system. But the main reason we went over there, and I'm going to feature it again, is that in the prior video, I had shown some setup tool that Carl from 3MA were using for his Clear Audio Innovation turntable. And there was something that looked a little bit anomalous because Carl has experience setting up that exact same turntable with his brother and has extensive experience setting up turntables in general. It just, the tone arm wasn't behaving the way it should have behaved, he thought. Um, on some of the anti-skate and run-in and run-out um, measurements. So um, JR with Wally Tools as well as Clear Audio asked that we film some stuff to show them and JR is very gracious with his time and helping out and then I guess Clear Audio wants to make sure things are made right, you know, something's defective. So I'm going to share that video on the public channel even though it's mainly for their purposes. I think it's interesting for you guys to see customer service level and meticulousness that 3MA goes through to help you set up your turntable and all these other people like JR being uh, gracious with their time, they all deserve credit. So I offered to film this all for them and share it with you guys as well. So that's another thing that's coming um, on top of that. But then my phone went out of uh, battery or didn't have much left. Uh, the other thing that happened that same day, all of that stuff, uh, a gentleman that I've met at 3MA, a customer of theirs, but we've just um, talked a lot and got to know each other. And then he learned about my channel and he was interested in building the GR Research and Extremes or the Anexatas because he couldn't really tell. So he asked if he could come over and hear mine, get my thoughts in, in, in more detail. So I obviously invited him to come on over. And if you're ever in Houston, uh, hit me up. You know, maybe we can uh, coordinate um, if you want to come by and listen. But he came over, and what was fun is that, uh, yeah, I think he's going to build the N Extremes after hearing him. Uh, he was really impressed, and unfortunately, I couldn't film his reactions because my battery was, like, down at 1%. But I'll have a video with him in the future because I think he was so impressed. He was talking at the end, like, he would like to engage me in a consulting project where I helped him set up his system, um, you know, because I think what really pushed it over the edge for him, and that's why I'm going to share this story with you, is that the 2.2 where I have the GR Research and Extremes and two subs, I think he was sold at that point. He was going to go buy the and Extremes. But then I told him, I said, look, I'm going to save the best for last. And I think he was, you know, not really sure what that meant. But I did a home theater demo with obviously the and Extremes and the rest of my setup. And, you know, I kind of build it up for pretty high, but I just always want to see after I show him <laughs> what they say after the fact, and sure enough, uh, it's like 100%. Uh, this is always happens. Once they hear the home theater demo that I do, it's like that's a, one of the best things I've seen or heard in my life. And so again, it parlayed into you know then wanting me to set up his system, and that's happened several times already. So something that I don't touch on on the channel, multi-channel. But it also parlays into what I've been featuring with the key and the link widths and kind of the mission of my channel is that I want to feature stuff, obviously that's cool and stuff, budget stuff sometimes and the normal stuff, but also feature stuff that's elevating the hobby um, and where we can go with audiophilia to take us to that next level. And I think multi-channel gets a bad rap. And that's why I don't feature it because it's hard enough to get people to believe in DSP and learning how to do that right. And that's a tough learning curve. And sometimes people never get over that alone. Um, but then when you get to multi-channel, it's a whole nother set of dogmas where people have been burned listening to it and don't like it or just don't want to deal with it or the hassle of all that extra equipment and aesthetics. 
But when you do it right, again, for me, I was in that same camp of dogmatic against it. But then when I heard this one system that blew me away with this one piece of content, I became obsessed. It was better than anything I had heard, period, from speakers and audio playback. And so I dedicated a year of my life <laughs> to try to reproduce that in my home. And I think I even may have exceeded it to a lot of, uh, some extent. Um, and so that's what I showcase to people when they come to show. At some point in the future, I think you're going to see um, multi-channel take back um, some market share in terms of where it can actually um, be superior to two channel. And you're starting to see, and I'll give props to another video I watched this weekend from Audioholics where he was talking about upmixing your two channel content. Uh, that was a very nice video that he did because and when done right, and he's put a lot into his room, and he's put a lot into each speaker. Um, not to get off on this tangent too much, and he probably should have spent more time talking about this. You have to put the same dedication that you put into your two-channel setup to your 5.17, whatever you're doing. Uh, when you have dinky center channel, dinky rear channels, and you're up-mixing content and throwing a lot of content now onto your center or your rears, uh, you can have normal clipping because your gear is not up to it. And then these algorithms, you got to be very careful with them. They can produce digital clipping with their algorithms up mixing. And he probably didn't spend enough time talking about that, probably because he's already got the experience to not deal with it. So it's not something you should do as an amateur. And that's why a lot of people get turned off with up mixing to multi channel because it does create potentially a lot of problems. And he touches on a lot, some things about center spread that's very good. But when you do it right, the end goal here is if you do do it right, there's really nothing that can beat a properly set up multi-channel in terms of giving you an experience that you will never forget. Uh, and that's what kind of it's all about. And so that's what I was able to share with this gentleman. And, you know, if you ever come over here, you're welcome to do that. Now, on the flip side of the coin, I did watch some other stuff on YouTube that wasn't so great. I'll put that in the membership area because that's the other thing I don't share uh, on the public channels if I'm calling people out. Uh, again, I could do that for a lot of views, a lot of stuff, but I kind of like the channel the way it is right now and the, the cool vibe that we all have, you know, and as we're growing, it looks like we're growing people that are like-minded and, you know, or into the sweet spot that I'm more tailored to than the masses. So, but there are some things that unfortunately, uh, people are giving really bad advice. And one thing I would share with you, and I'll probably do a video on the public channel in the future about what are the best attributes to have as an audiophile. And everybody thinks good ears, you know, all this uh, taste in music, all these things that are putting the cart before the horse. What you really need to have, in my opinion, to be a good audiophile is, first of all, know what you don't know, okay? Don't pretend to know stuff you don't. Don't pretend to be an expert. That's what I'm noticing, at least in this one case. Uh, and it was detrimental not to viewers. It was detrimental to his own system. Uh, not knowing what you're doing, not knowing uh, can, you know, be really bad. And so... Again, I'm not interested in calling people out, but one thing that is beneficial to you is that if you know what you don't know, then you're always going to be open and looking for people that have advice that you can trust. And like in my case, if I want to know something about vinyl, you know, I've got Carl at 3MA who does a lot of work. I know JR now at Wally Tools uh, when it comes to a lot of electronic stuff. I can call up Steve McCormick. I know the things that I don't know or know the people to call that know more than me and can leverage that. And one thing that you got to be careful of is not only knowing what you don't know, but you know the, the experts that you trust, a lot of people on YouTube do have more experience than a new person, but there's a big difference between Jameis Winston as a quarterback and Tom Brady. So, and some of these guys don't even have Jameis Winston level. They don't even spend any time understanding how gear works, have any technical knowledge. It's just gear, price, generalizations, uh, and really 
not fair to you guys who have less experience, who may be fooled to thinking that they're Tom Brady, but they're not. Um, and so, you know, again, I do all that stuff in the membership channel, but it's very important for you to try to get as many um, opinions as you can and start sifting out which ones can provide you that value. And it may not be one person for everything. You know, like I just told you, vinyl may be somebody that you can trust. Um, electronics, you know, speaker building, uh, servers and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people call me for that level of stuff, but I'll call them for the vinyl stuff. So again, it's very important if you're new in a hobby or if you're even experienced, know what you don't know, <laughs> don't pretend to know stuff you don't know, and then fill in the blanks. Don't be, you know, the whole thing in this hobby, the only problem I see is, you know, that 1% of the people you can encounter have this ego and pretentiousness that they know everything and they know what's right for everybody. That's, you know, those are the few in the hobby that, you know, probably cause a majority of the drama. So in any case, what I'm also releasing today, getting back to on topic, is the key audio music clips, similar to what I did for the Linkwits. And then I have one more part of that series where I release the summary that I do, synopsizing everything. But like I said, there's a big 40 minute video in the membership section already where you get the free flowing, just raw footage that we talked about after each song. So I hope that gets you caught up and um, I'm gonna have plenty more. I actually, believe it or not, it never stops. I'm going to California this weekend to visit the guy, the Aries Surratt room um, at Expona. Check out that video if you haven't already because I'm actually going to that gentleman's house. He has eight systems in his house. Can't wait to see that. So that'll be a whole weekend worth of material. I'm bringing a battery back up this time for next weekend stuff for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed. Sign up, subscribe, and I'll see you back here soon.